All right, YouTubers, Benjamin here. I am going to show you um, some construction on the Cyclone CNC mill. Um, I have it listed on eBay, as I said uh, previously, and I said I was going to outline and take a whole bunch of pictures of construction, and I thought to myself, that's pretty silly. Uh, for me to do that and kind of old-fashioned anyway, you know stuff gets lost whatever Coffee spilled on it. So what I'm going to do is not only is this video going to be on YouTube I'll also make a link in the description where you can download it so you can watch it as many times as you want uh, And that'll be publicly available for you anyways um, Whether you buy it for me or you download it and make it yourself or whatever uh, you can get uh, templates specific to this CNC mill. Uh, my sales include these. That tells you, you know, how you can make it with uh, reproducible results. These these templates are to scale, and they don't tell you what part is what. So I had to do that. But with my failed GIMP attempts, Photoshop-like program to uh, turn it from nothing handwritten job to stuff with text on it kind of failed it shrunk it and did all kinds of craziness and I'm just horrible with GIMP anyway you probably noticed in some of the other videos I don't like editing I don't I hate editing anyway uh, so this video is probably gonna be pretty long and kind of boring maybe but if you want to build one you'll sit through it and, and suffer uh, so first things first is when you're actually building the machine um, and you've never built something like this before I if I were you as I did but if I were you um, stick with the template uh, I use plexiglass that I found from somewhere obviously it's dirty and um, anyway I use plexiglass so what I did is I stuck this plate I stuck this piece of paper on this plate and then I taped it so that way it doesn't move and then I stuck with these uh, left and right frames. Give you some specifics on what they are. All right. In the uh, STL files, this one's called the left frame. Even though looking from the forward side, it's the front and it goes this way. When it comes further out, this is the max and that's the minimum. So you'll see that there's two gears they look a little different the one gear with the little uh, set screw attachment that's your stepper motor gear and this one is your actually your, your threaded rod gear your yeah, your threaded rod gear I have I have two bolts on there and inside there there is a eight millimeter washer with an eight millimeter uh, bearing okay and the uh, each of each of the uh, frames the X carriage frames they have little sets in them so that's not something you want to put down first but anyway I'm just showing you so you see on this side has has two nuts uh, and also it has a, an eight millimeter wash an eight millimeter bearing so what you want to do place your template on your what's going to be eventually your surface tape it to it so it doesn't move and then temporarily place your your frames on there okay and then take your shafts uh, the bill of materials that I use which totally sucked and was out of date stated that these should be 300 millimeters long or 30 centimeters long that's what I did and obviously I could have made a little longer um, and uh, I had some threaded rod left over so I actually could have got a, a wider work surface out of it honestly but anyway this works so set up your two frames take your little spacers here and put them on there I think those are 12 or 15 millimeter uh, M3 and put your uh, uh, Y carriage on there and while you're doing that you got to be kind of tricky with it is if you decide to put on your 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 y carriage which is i'm sorry your your z your your x carriage which is this this is these two is your z carriage this is your x carriage 
so you gotta slide these on and these are the LM8 what is it UU or whatever linear bearings these have a whole bunch of little micro BBs in it when you slide your your threaded rods through them be very careful that you do not punch out those BBs because if you do the bearing is crap don't even try and save it just smash with a hammer throw it away and get another one you are going to need 12 of those 8 millimeter uh, LM8 UU uh, bearing uh, linear bearings so two here there's two down here two on this is on this Z axis okay and two right there now this is a little different from the uh, original design because I'm using an RC spindler motor I did not like the Dremel motor one because it's really loud number two it doesn't have enough torque but anyway you can see that I did not make any modifications to the original design I just made some adapter plates which work auto magically and uh, they actually worked out a lot better but if you do, do decide to use something make sure you have an upper and a lower bearing see that there's a bearing in there don't skip it because otherwise the shaft right here is going to jerk around that bearing this, this thrust bearing right here is prevents the jerking around um, let's see something you need to see right here is this right here was not in any instructions matter of fact I didn't find any instructions at all I had to guess at building this thing I just had to look at pictures and just remember on how I built that thing uh, that thing actually had some instructions at least however um, I still had to make modifications to those two to, to get it building because I built a lot of parts from this thing and now it works wonderful anyway when you put on your threaded rod like I said that is also magic trick but it's a lot easier to put on the the X carriage first kind of get it in place just get the screws in place okay where it's holding the rods just snug not tight snug and then you run the threaded rod through it but the way you have to do that is you have to put on one of these bolts first so the, well, I'm sorry one of these nuts first so stick on this nut first and then whatever spring you have to do that's the other thing you got to find a spring nowhere in the, any of the building materials that say you have a spring and a washer to do this this is your anti backlash stuff so that way it isn't bounce around and things like that um, anyways the spring has to be at least an inch long it has to be a compression type so that means it's an open spring and it does a spring in action when it's compressed um, and you see there there's a washer the spring is compressed there's a washer and then there's a nut on the other side and like I said it keeps the the, the X carriage from backlashing back and forth okay uh, it's the same thing with that one this is the that little thing I don't know how well you can see it the Y carriage back there has the exact same thing I'm not going to take it apart to show you alright uh, something else that is of notable interest of how you mount the Z carriage stepper um, the original design called that you had an 8 millimeter nut in there and down in here there's an 8 millimeter nut well as you see there isn't one and it's not space for it uh, also it called that this shaft was also supposed to be 300 millimeters long and if you see if it was 300 millimeters long it's gonna bash that so I don't I didn't make any measurements I just had to cut it down to size but the size that I did make it was because this right here is not gonna move as you see there there is the little gear that goes on the stepper motor with a set screw and then there's a smaller one there's only one in the parts kit that has that okay there's also a eight millimeter um, bearing there and this um, threaded rod gear has two bolts this one actually has a um, oh, what a countersink in it to hold this one and then that's tied together so that way this doesn't move you know that way this doesn't move without doing anything without actually being a purposeful move 
and the threaded rod for your Z carriage needs to go down I don't know if you can see the comparison but it needs to go down at least to the length of your end of your collet so that way you have room to move and also if you're using a smaller bit like I'm using a very small this is a one millimeter bit and I'm going to use smaller ones uh, it needs to go down so you don't want to make it any longer than that obviously because you don't want your your Z carriage threaded rod hitting your work and this just bouncing around and doing all kinds of craziness so fortunately the benefit of this thing uh, you do not need a max limit switch I mean you probably do but uh, once this thing gets to the top it just kinda it just kinda bounces on the top of the bolt uh, and you know you've reached your max but your your work area limits about 30 millimeters or or three centimeters anyway okay let's see your electronics uh, some people have put their electronics right here don't do that uh, that's silly because look all right if you're working with copper you see this crap goes everywhere even if it's inside a plate or I'm sorry inside a cover which is bad anyway it's gonna get all over that and destroy your your electronics so this right here is minimized uh, the other thing is too is these heat sinks or like that for a reason until I get a fan on it and actually move them I don't really like them there either uh, but your stepper motors are going to be doing a little bit of work so make sure that the heat sinks they need to be oriented like this so that way you know believe it or not it actually does make a difference because heat flows up you know remember the flow of convection from what fifth or sixth grade you know science class uh, heat flows up so cold air comes from the bottom goes up uh, ideally you want a fan blowing on these all right and uh, you'll see that on the Y carriage uh, mounts itself, or actually the, the actual work surface mounts. There's four of them. There's uh, four more LM8 UU linear bearings. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's only one for each of them. And. Oh, limit switches. So. Your limit switches are mounted here. Now you can use optical if you want. Great. If you can figure that out, then you're smarter than me. Uh, what I did was is I just took some limit switches from a laser printer, um, and then I used an extra three millimeter bolt, an M3 M3 uh, a bolt, to use it as a kind of a precision adjustment. That's one that really never needs to be adjusted. And I'll slowly move that here. All right, you see the limit switch on the Y back frame mount too. And uh, this is your back frame. So when this work surface is pushed all the way to the back, that is your zero zero coordinates. Now your Z, um, you probably should, and I probably should too, put a um, X and Y maximum. So that way, if you uh, do uh, relative positioning and zero it, so like if this is here and your work surface is here and it calls for something, you know, uh, it's not going to bash into that. So that way the machine will shut down. But anyway, for your zeroing, obviously because your, your depth surfaces are going to be completely different, um, <coughs> excuse me. I need to figure out a better way than this here. Uh, this presents some resistance, but uh, it seems to work where I just have the negative lead clip to uh, the motor because this is completely isolated from the actual control electronics. It's its own circuit, so uh, I ain't worried about that. But anyway, uh, and this is how you get the zero surface. So when this piece is mounted in here or mounted with my little clamps to the surface, when this go, when you're zeroing this, it'll go down, and as soon as, soon as this, as soon as this touches your your work surface, that's your that's your zero, that's your home for for Z. Uh, obviously, you have to come up with something else for other types of materials. However, you want to do that, that's fine. But I'm going to work with circuit boards, so that's what I use. Um, 
What else can I show you? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, some reminders. Uh, every now and then, you will need to put grease on your gears. Okay, crap flies in there. Grease them up. Put a, just put a little bit of grease. You don't need to get you know too uh, <laughs> too uh, liberal with it. Uh, just enough to do the job. Don't use the grease on the linear bearings. Just use something like LPS. Uh, don't use WD-40. That I'll just run off and cause problems. And definitely, definitely, you must absolutely grease your threaded rod. So always keep some grease with you. Like I said, if you're putting on so much grease that when it spins, it's throwing grease everywhere. You put too much. Um, just enough to do the job. But if you don't use that, if you don't put grease on there, it will cause you problems. Uh, it'll start grinding, it'll start destroying your threaded rods, uh, and it's just not going to work. And your stepper motors, yeah, they're only eight, nine, ten dollars a piece, but uh, if a stepper motor goes out in the middle of a project that's going to make you some money, that's not cool, and that sucks. Anyway, so that's uh, that's all I got for now. I uh, just got done printing some parts for a customer. So next one could be you. Um, if you have any questions, please ask, and uh, I'll do what I can to help you out. Uh, one of my next videos here in the coming time is, and once I fully get happy with the particular uh, workflow, is how to take a schematic design and turn it into an actual circuit board. A circuit board that's uh, ready to be populated. Thanks for watching. Please share, subscribe, all the other crap that goes along with it. Have a good day.